So now modeling from the point cloud is really just like doing any other existing conditions model. Just the information you have to work with, I think, is a lot better than maybe your own hand notes from field measuring by hand uh, or one of those, you know, provided for you floor plans. So I'm going to go over a couple tips and tricks about viewing the point cloud, um, maybe taking measurements. But we've seen this before. You're basically just tracing over the walls, um, putting in the windows and doors, doing the stairs, that type of stuff. All right, so the first thing, um, lots of things, lots of different ways you can view the point cloud. So here we see we're in the first floor plan, and we saw in section I lined it up. One thing that's helpful is to change the view range and make the view range about minus one foot. Uh, so then you can see the actual floor it sort of makes things easier to see. Um, if you don't want to see it like that, you can always change it. So you sort of have the cut plane up above where that floor is, but it sort of helps give a little bit more contrast, I think, so we can see the difference between the walls and the floor. The point cloud itself has multiple view modes. So if we go into visibility graphics, you can see point clouds tab is now open. And if we change the mode, RGB is what it is by default. It's showing the actual images. You can do a single color, which you can see is just one color. Elevation will sort of show the differences in height. We don't really need that. Uh, I can't remember intensity. You guys can check it out. But normals is the one that sort of I use second most frequently. And that just shows the basically the 90 degree um, like the 90 degree projections. So that is a better way of seeing contrast if you can't really see something in the RGB. Uh, normals is the thing to use. And that's view dependent. So you can see now that I've gone into this section, it's back to RGB. And I don't know if there's a global setting like under object styles for point cloud. Um, so you might just have to change it in every view as you're working. Uh, and you can also change it in the templates. So here we are in section, uh, we saw this briefly earlier where I lined up the first floor, but you can see how valuable this is and it sort of already works out. You know, my second floor is sort of already in the right place. I can see my second floor ceiling is a little bit high, so I'm just going to nudge that down until I get to basically about where the ceiling is and you can see this really shows you how imperfect existing conditions are, so you sort of have to use your best judgment about where exactly that ceiling is or how you want to use it. A lot of times these things don't matter a huge deal. Um, and if it came out of some fraction, I'd probably just change it to seven, eight and a half. Um, but this is super helpful for identifying things like bulkheads. You can see slope, so I no longer have to measure the slope of that roof if I was doing this by hand out in the field. If we come back into a floor plan, and move the section through the stairs. We'll see a real good view of the stairs. So you see the actual treads and risers. You can count them here. You can measure them here in floor plan instead of actually doing it in the field. Uh, it's super easy, and especially with a kind of a crazy complex split level house like this, uh, it makes things way faster and way more accurate than if I'd done this by myself. So to model, a lot of times also I'll use, when I start creating a new wall, I'm going to do a generic 10 inch wall. I sort of measured this with the detail line to be about 10 inches because I have what I think is the extent of the building based on the survey and I have what I know is the interior face of the walls. Uh, and so a lot of times I'll do the exterior walls with the location line set to finish face interior because that's what I'm modeling. And I basically just line it up. We can come back later and get um, fireplace things like that or like wall, you know, little wall protrusions. But basically, I want to make a wall that goes all the way to the rear um, as best as possible. And here we even have like a little bit of an offset. So you can see this is really just roughing the shape of the building in. Um, and then we're going to go and get more accurate as we go on. I will always go out back to the field after I've after I've got this you know this is saving me the hours of hand measuring but you still have to go confirm so once the as-built model is done or at least I would say 90% done and I've got the floor plans I can go back out to the field and I'll take a couple dimensions you know I'll take an overall dimension in the longest span I can see in each way so I'll you know I'll take a dimension overall this way I'll take one overall that way I'll get a couple ceiling heights just to confirm and this is about the fifth project I've done and I've never been off I would say by more than an inch usually it's about a half inch difference um, with what I've modeled on the point cloud and what I see with my laser in the field and that's that's always generally okay for these residential additions and and sort of renovations um, but just doing this just sort of doing this confirmation in the field, it's maybe 15 minutes of work as opposed to two or three hours of measuring the whole house uh, by hand.
All right, and as you're starting to build up the model, um, you know, sometimes you won't always be 100% sure where a wall is. So I can see that there's a wall here going to some type of bathroom. I can see the toilet and the shower and the vanity. Uh, and so I've got the wall. I think it's about five inch thick wall. Um, I've got it generally in the right place. If I want to confirm, I can do that a couple different ways. One, I can go into section and I can see it's more or less lined up. If I make that section, say, only one foot or maybe two feet so I don't see the background, you know, so it doesn't see that far wall. I'm cutting just through the wall. I can see that it's pretty much in the right place. I also notice that this is a level where the floor is set down. So I know I'm gonna have to create a new level here for like first floor lower or upper cellar, whatever I wanna call it because it's a split level. So I can go ahead and do that in a minute. And you can also check this out in 3D. So um, here I'm in a 3D view with the section box. There's that wall right there that we we're drawing and you can sort of see if the wall is selected you can sort of see how it, uh, it how it sort of occupies the same exact place in 3d space as the point cloud and if I shift it back and forth a little bit I can see now that walls not in the right place because I can see only the wall and there I can see only the point cloud but when you can sort of see a little bit and Revit doesn't know exactly which one to show that sort of indication that that wall is in the right place because it's it's like I said it's occupying the same 3D place uh, as the point cloud. You can also use point cloud to confirm the measurements and dimensions of windows and doors so I've got a section looking forward I can see this window in the front wall and I'm just going to do a detail line from the inside of the trim to over here and I can see that it's about 2.8 and going down this way it's about 4.2 so if I just place a window, I'll edit type, I'll duplicate, and I'll call it existing 2.8 by 4.2. All right, I paused while Revit was struggling with changing the window, but basically I renamed it 2.842, and then I changed the size of it, and I'm just going to use the arrow keys to generally get it in the right place. We'll measure the sill height. It's about 2.6 and, you know, some change. So we'll call this 2.6 for now, which I think is probably accurate to what was intended. Uh, and there's just one thing more that I can go confirm when I'm in the site, but I don't need that window. So now I've got the window. You can sort of do the same thing for the doors. Um, you can do the windows all the way around. You can see I've got some more up here. Um, and I got a big picture window over here on this side. And so you'll be able to more accurately get all the differences between all the windows um, doing with the point cloud and then just spend a little bit of time verifying after you're done. And of course you should be using the virtual tour in conjunction while you're modeling. So here where I said we had a big picture window, really it's a sort of a field made or maybe a factory mold three window set with this big center and then probably two casements on each side. Um, back here where I thought it looked like maybe just a fixed window. I can see it's a double hung or a single hung with some lights on top. And so the virtual tour, you know, maybe you probably would have had pictures of that if you took pictures everywhere. But if you're like me, you'll take 300 pictures of a house and you're still going to miss something. And the virtual tour misses absolutely nothing. All right, more benefits of modeling point cloud. Here we have this screen porch with these exposed rafters and collar ties. If I cut a couple sections through here, I can see real clearly the spacing of the joists if I need that. I can come into this section, I've set it to normals, and I can just take a quick detail line dimension that's about nine inches, so it's probably two by 10. I can see the collar ties are two by eights. I can see the distance from the floor up to the collar ties or up to the peak. I can see the framing from the deck below. Uh, and I can see the slope, so I don't have to worry about trying to measure at the wall and measure at the peak. I just take a slope, do an annotate, um, do a spot slope, and there we go, five and three quarters out of 12. Maybe it's maybe I round it to six. Um, but just another advantage of using these point clouds as opposed to documenting everything by hand. All right, so I think that was a general run through of the basic modeling tasks. Um, if you guys have any questions or want to see more specific things, you can send me an email. So just keep in mind a couple things. One, like I've said already, um, you're going to have to go back and verify in field a couple of the dimensions just to make sure that your point cloud is accurate and that you know you modeled it correctly. And the bigger one is that it doesn't capture, at least with the Matterport Pro, it's not going to capture the exterior. So you're still going to have to go take a bunch of pictures, um, get in stuff, you know, like the siding, the shutters, the you know, where the roof is, how the roof overhangs, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, but verifying that I have found is so much easier and faster once I have basically a 90-95% complete set of plans done. Um, and then I just go back out, take some exterior photos, take some exterior measurements to the grade and typical things like that, uh, and then I'm done. So this is a previous project. This is the one I showed sort of in the intro video. This is not the Tilbury job I was just modeling a minute ago, but this one is done um, uh, through existing conditions, and this project's actually pretty far along. So for instance, one thing you might not be able to see, you know, you don't always see everything in the point cloud. So for instance, this little sunroom back here just has a regular eight foot ceiling. Um, and there's just a bunch of interstitial space back here in the eaves. Um, and you can't even see all of it. But from pictures and, and looking at it out, out in the field, I can see that the roof is significantly higher. So sometimes um, your point cloud won't always capture this stuff, but in general, it is great at capturing things like vertical chases and the slope of roofs like this roof up here. Um, the rafters do form the ceiling, and so I'm able to see exactly the slope of it and sort of get an idea for the thickness of the roof, that type of thing. So all in all, I'm loving it. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to measure a house by hand again as long as I don't have to because this point cloud workflow is so much better. I highly, highly recommend